Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, we have a math teacher who is giving out some free tutoring. Most parents would be grateful, but not this mother. Let's jump right in. This is my mom's story. She's a high school maths teacher, and during her free time, she likes to help students who are struggling with the subject. Sometimes she does it for free, both for my classmates and for those who can't afford it. Mom gets contacted by this lady, we'll call her Entitled Mother, who asks for help for her son who at the time was in second grade of secondary school in Italy's school system. She can't pay as she's struggling financially, but my mom says no worry and that she would be happy to help him, and texts the Entitled Mother her available days and times to schedule the first lesson. The Entitled Mother insists on specific time frames that my mom never mentioned, but she tries to accommodate since it's only the first lesson. She also accommodates to have the lesson at the Entitled Mother's place, since for the Entitled Mother, it's difficult to reach your house. The first lesson comes by and mom is a little weirded out. Entitled mother, instead of briefly saying hi and then leaving, hangs around the whole lesson making my mom uncomfortable, as she's not used to having someone stare at her as she's explaining Pythagoras and stuff. She brushes it off and schedules a second lesson, again at the entitled mother's home. The entitled mother again pushes for a specific time, but my mom this time stands her ground and tells her she's available only that specific day. The entitled mother subtly complains, but follows the given directions. The second lesson, same thing. The entitled mother sits in the corner and stares at mom, who now feels very uncomfortable, and at the end of the lesson takes aside the entitled mother and politely explains she would rather be alone with her student, and if that's not possible, she's happy to do the lesson at our house. The entitled mother seems to understand and organizes with my mom the third lesson. The third lesson's day comes by and the student is late. Mom calls the entitled mother who explains she can't drive to our house and then asks mom if she can come to pick up the student. Mom says she can't and that the student can just walk to our place. Mind this, it's only a 10 minute walk and it's roughly 3 p.m. and the student is a 12 year old boy and we live in a quiet suburban town. The entitled mother insists for a few minutes, but my mom is immovable. The entitled mother then proceeds to start screaming at her, saying she's a terrible teacher and that her boy learned nothing, that no one should pay for her lessons and basically that she can rot in hell. Mom ends the phone call and goes on with her day, ignoring the threatening texts that the entitled mother continues to send to her. A few days later, the entitled mother texts my mom again, asking her if she can come for another free lesson. Well, that seems to be a pretty textbook case of how somebody keeps up healthy boundaries. It's also a textbook case about how some crazy people react to any boundaries. Story 2 shows us a choosing beggar mother-in-law who knows how to take the kind offer from her son-in-law to build picture frames for her and turn it up a notch. Some background information. I am a self-employed carpenter in lockdown since March the 15th. I went to my place of work two times since then. One time to clean, second time to get some paperwork. Both times I was pulled over by the cops. No problem at all. Since my significant other and me got bored during the lockdown, she started with diamond painting and gifted one to her mom. They both love doing it and I'm just glad she has something to do. My significant other asked me where she can get frames to hang them and I told her that if she wants, I can use up some leftover wood to make some frames so she doesn't have to pay for the frames. I checked my stock and told her what colors of wooden panels I got left that I can use to make the frames. My significant other was very happy and chose some different colors for her paintings and she also asked if I can make a frame for her mom's painting too. I said that's no problem and told her to send my mother-in-law a list of the colors that I have. When I was making the frames for my significant other today, I got a text from mother-in-law to tell me, not ask, she wanted her painting framed with high gloss white edges. However, I haven't got that color in stock and one panel costs around 400 euro. 
One panel is 305 centimeter by 125 centimeter, and I need four pieces of 60 centimeter by four centimeter. So I told her I haven't got that color in stock, and if she wants her painting framed fast, she would have to choose another color, one of the list significant other sent her. Said she didn't like those colors and said to order a high gloss white panel. I told her it was ridiculous. Didn't say it in those words. She would have to pay for a big panel if she only needed a small part and that the other colors were free. She just answered, you said you would make the frames for free, but you don't have the right colors. Just order a panel I like and keep the rest so you can frame my future paintings. When I got home, I told my significant other about it. She called mother-in-law in case I misunderstood something, but it appears mother-in-law wants me to buy the panel and make her a frame from it and she will make more paintings to frame with the rest or else I can make her a free table with the wood. My significant other tried to tell her that what my mother-in-law wants is not okay and now my mother-in-law is angry with me, my significant other and my father-in-law since he said my significant other and I were right not to cave in to her demands. I guess no good deed goes unpunished. This story is a real outlier because I've never heard of a situation where somebody has a problem with their mother-in-law before. In story three, we have a choosing beggar at a restaurant who thinks that 25% off is a pretty poor discount. Every business has a regular that's a pain in the butt. I work at a wing restaurant and we have a regular who we are going to call Kyle. Kyle is a frequent customer and has frequent confrontations with our staff. Keep in mind we are a small restaurant with few employees. Here is a small list of the things that Kyle has done to warrant his ban from our restaurant. He would bring in empty soda bottles and fill them with soda he did not pay for. He stole our bottles of Texas Pete hot sauce by shoving the bottles into his pants. We had eight, we now have one. He will always return no matter how many times we tell him not to return. These are all repeated offenses. Now what made him a choosing beggar is what he does every visit that led to the biggest confrontation we've had with him. So to help with the current pandemic, we shut down our dining room and we offer 25% off on all large meals and combos. However, we allow customers to change their sides for other sides on the menu with upcharges if they cost more on the menu than the regular french fries. When we started doing the discount, Kyle's attendance jumped to almost every Monday and Tuesday, usually on my shift. He orders a 10 piece and wants to change the fries. We spend about 10 minutes trying to decide on a side dish for him, and he settles on a side salad. He begrudgingly pays for the food, and I get his food and send him on his way. The next portion of this was heard from my manager, Jay. Jay usually stays in the restaurant for about 2-3 to three hours after closing to help out the customers who get off past our pandemic hours. Kyle comes around 9 p.m. the following Friday, and Jay is still there taking orders. The conversation between him and Jay is as follows. Hi, Kyle. What can I get for you? Hi, um, can I get a 10-piece? I'll keep the fries. Sure, man. That'll be 11 12 That's with 25% off? Yep. Can you slide me an extra discount? I can't afford that. That's already a good discount, and I'm barely breaking even. Come on, man. I need to feed my family. So do I. It's the best I can do. I'm one of your most loyal customers. Come on. Don't be a witch like that one girl, referring to me since I am the employee he last saw. Excuse me? Get out. You don't come into my house and insult my people. At that point, Kyle gets very defensive and Jay threatens to call the cops. Kyle eventually leaves. I opened the Saturday after that and was told the story. That day, Kyle called in to make an order. I immediately handed over the phone to let my manager deal with him. We still have him come in despite telling him multiple times he isn't welcome. But that's my first experience with a choosing beggar. In our final story, our OP gets a request from a choosing beggar for some background dancers. But not every aspiring artist has stars in their eyes. 
Hey! Hi! Sup? You can skip the small talk, lol. I'm looking for some background dancers for a music video at a well-known artist's house. Male or female, and with exotic looks, do you know anyone who'd be interested? Maybe. When's the gig and what's the payout? Tuesday. No payout per se, but it's one of a kind opportunity. We'll get a lot of exposure and credited. What do you mean by exposure? Like free sessions at a tanning salon? This better not be a porno. I laugh my butt off. No, like networking opportunity to meet the right people. By networking, do you mean like free Wi-Fi? No, bro, this is a one-of-a-kind, unique opportunity to get your name and face out there with the right people. Can lead to a whole ton of money on the future. Okay, here is what I'm texting people. Hey, Choosing Beggar is looking for background dancers for his music video shoot this Tuesday. He's offering free tanning sessions, free Wi-Fi for life, and a ton of money. Here's his phone number. No! That's not what I say. Scroll up, bro. My bad. I'm half paying attention because I'm watching Oprah. No worries. So you're offering free ATVs? No. Shake my head. Scroll up. My bad. I mixed you up with Oprah. She just gave the whole audience ATVs. Okay, so here's my new pitch. Hey, Choosing Beggar is looking for naive and vulnerable young people to exploit for free labor on his music video. Can he afford to pay you? Absolutely. You'll be filming at a famous artist's house, and where do you think all this expensive filming equipment came from? Will he pay you? Absolutely not. Gullible artists are a dime a dozen in LA, so you're completely disposable. But don't worry. He can offer you insincere offers of future work, and if you're female, don't be surprised if you get invited to do some additional collaboration in one of the producer's bedrooms. What? Flip, bro! That's not what this is at all! I help up-and-coming artists all the time. We just aren't in a position to pay people. This is common in the industry. Everyone knows this. Pay them out of your own pocket. I don't make money like that. Sell your paintball gun collection and your purebred dog. Lol, bro, why you see my dog? My pit is a rescue. No one pays for pit bulls. They already got a bad rap. You tagged a pit bull kennel selling purebred blue nose pit bulls for several thousand dollars a pop on your Instagram story. Why are you creeping on my Instagram, bro? You should not be talking to me this way. That's how trying to bull stuff people smarter than you works. You lie, and then I trap you. Blocking you. You are messing with the wrong person. I know everyone and can make your life hell. Well, they can't be that important if they can't afford to pay minimum wage. Stay out of my business and mind yourself. But what if I need a one-of-a-kind networking opportunity or free sessions at a tanning salon? For the last time, Mother Flipper, there is no tanning salon. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.